Amen. <laughs> we see that there's not only service, but a whole lot of fun going on in that group. What a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful project this has been. What a great week this has been as well. I'd like to now introduce our speakers. For our sermon today, we will have three speakers, Megan Hughes, Winnie Willis, and Josh Brookins. And they will each share about the projects that they've been a part of throughout our community this week. Uh, between each sermon, we're going to sing two verses of the servant song to commit ourselves and remind ourselves to all be in service to God. So I'd like to first invite Megan Hughes to come forward. Megan, would you come and share? And I think you're going to bring Orla with you. Good, good. Thank you. Let's welcome Megan to speak this morning. Thank you, Pastor James. Good morning. My name is Megan Hughes, and my daughters Orla and Clara and I have been members here at San Carlos United Methodist Church since last year. And uh, I have to say a very happy eighth birthday to my sweet Orla today is her birthday. <laughs> In this past week, I was very happy to serve as part of the group who went to Feeding San Diego. I also got to sing at Arbor Hills Nursing Home, and the girls and I decorated placemats for Meals on Wheels. Before we became members uh, here, the thing that most drew me to San Carlos United Methodist Church and what continues to impress me is the incredible amount of outreach and service opportunities made available to us. I honestly tell my friends about it. <laughs> Not only does Pastor James fill our hearts with the message of spreading God's love, but it seems to me that everyone here takes that into action. I am honored to be a part of this community. That was incredibly evident this week as I had these beautiful opportunities. As we walked into Feeding San Diego, printed on the wall in large letters was part of St. Francis's prayer. It is in giving that we receive. In each of these places this week, I felt I received much more than I could ever give. At Feeding San Diego, we got to inspect and bag pears and stack cantaloupe. Those fresh fruits were to be donated for a military appreciation event and also a Parks After Dark event for hungry children at local rec centers. We bagged over 2,800 pounds of pears and 1,800 pounds of cantaloupe. We we're very proud of ourselves. <laughs> we had 19 exceptional members of our church volunteering. Um, I also was going to read the scripture from Matthew, so I feel that maybe God wants us to hear it twice today. So I'll say it again <laughs> uh, from Matthew uh, chapter 25. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. I felt the Holy Spirit in so many aspects of the Feeding San Diego Day and the others. I saw the love of God in Winnie's care and detailed concern of organizing this event for us and making sure we had every detailed event of the information. I saw God in Mark Stengel, who is such a gift in my life already. I cry. But I came to find out he also volunteers at Feeding San Diego every Monday. I saw God in all of our volunteers who were bending down deeply into big boxes to dig out pears and may have felt aches and pains, but were all upbeat and having fun and getting to know one another better. We were able to be of service to God in the mission of helping to feed our fellow San Diegans. At the Arbor Hills Nursing Home sing-along, we saw faces light up from Libby's funny jokes and our offerings of music. It was such a beautiful gift to see the joy in people's faces while we sang. And I especially enjoyed one nurse who was dancing with some of the residents and surely spread God's love to them every day. While coloring the placemats for Meals on Wheels, I felt the Holy Spirit as the girls and I discussed how blessed we are and how we are able to spread God's love. We recognized that our placemats might be a bright spot in someone's day, and they were my girls were proud to be contributing. 
I'm so humbled by these opportunities. This week has renewed my hope. It's filled my heart with the Holy Spirit and reminded me that in giving we receive. It's reaffirmed my gratitude for being part of this church community. Thank you. speaker to come forward. That will be Winnie Willis to share about her project. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. My usual service to San Carlos United Methodist Church is in the music ministry. But for El Juan, I was the San, Di San Carlos United Methodist Church group leader for a Feeding San Diego event on Thursday, August 17th, 10 a.m. to noon. Why did this volunteer opportunity interest me? It's because from childhood I was taught that we must help somebody. The help didn't have to be showy or grandiose, just heartfelt. We were also taught that no service was too small. Things like fixing a meal and taking someone a plate, giving a ride to the grocery store or the doctor, keeping somebody company or calling when they are not near to their families or their friends. We call this looking out for folks. Throughout my life, the bedrock of caring for and loving our neighbors has been to feed them. Hence my affinity for volunteering at Feeding San Diego. As Megan said, this year there were 19 of us from San Carlos United Methodist Church at this Thursday event. We were assigned to glean and bag pears, literally thousands of them in washing machine sized bins. The pears were about the size of three quarters of your fist. We tied one end of a mesh bag, counted 14 pears into that bag, and then tied the top of the bag. Seems simple, but we had to get it right. We then placed the bag in a huge cardboard transport bin. Lastly, we clicked the button on the tally keeper, a little counter that we all enjoyed clicking. Some of us, like Josh, became the official tally keeper so when we came by with our one or two bags, he would stand there and click for us. It was a way to track how many bags had been filled. We'd been told that 500 bags was the goal. So we were focused on that goal, we were collaborative, and we were goal-oriented. When we, well, when we reached 500 bags, our feeding San Diego staff coordinator says, keep going. 
until you reach 115 more bags. Um, and then she added cantaloupes to the list of produce that we would process. That was when about four more of our San Carlos United Methodist Church volunteers who had bravely stood throughout the shift went in search of a chair to sit in. 12 noon, the end of our shift, came about pretty quickly then because we had picked up our pace, looking forward to seeing the bottom of that bin, or you might say, looking forward to seeing the back end of those pairs. Soon, the Feeding San Diego staff coordinator of our group, Sarah, gathered us around and gave us the statistics for how much we had done. She was generous in her compliments and told us that we had processed as Megan said, 2,800 pounds of pears and 1,800 pounds of cantaloupes. She restated that the pears would go to an ongoing feeding outreach program this weekend at the Rock Church. And the pear cantaloupe produce combinations would go to a night in the park, events at rec centers across the city. It's hard to express how proud we felt, how, how full of joy. And though we were a little shaky, we weren't all that tired either at that point. We were proud to be such a, a part of such a wide reaching effort. We had stopped that produce from going into a landfill, instead reclaiming it for people who need food. Sarah, the Feeding San Diego staff coordinator, told us that 30% of food produced in this country winds up in a landfill. Environmentally, that means we are creating more greenhouse gases. And from a humanitarian perspective, that means people go hungry. That scripture, Matthew 25, 35 to 40, caught us all up in its meaning. I'll read just a short piece of it. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. I'd like to invite Megan Sekviar to continue our sharing. Please share with us about your project. Good morning. I am Megan Sekviar. I have been coming to this church with my children, Stella and Wyatt, for five years. And sometimes my husband, Steve, shows up, but mostly on holidays. Um, every year at this time, we look forward to labor with our neighbor. We especially love working in the community garden. This is our third year working with Carol and the crew. This is our second year that we have colored placemats for Meals on Wheels recipients. And this year we also baked cookies for firefighters and also for Pastor James and Serena. <laughs> this time of year is special to us because, because it gives us the opportunity to go out into our neighborhood that we love and do something good all while glorifying God. It's a tangible expression of my love for Jesus Christ and for my neighbors. It has also been a very important time for me to teach my children crucial life lessons. One that's most important is that actions speak louder than words. And I've also been blessed to make very important friends along the way. My love language is baking and cooking, and I thank God for the opportunity to be able to share my special chocolate chip cookies with the men and women in my neighborhood that are able to help me 
if my family should ever have an emergency. I thank God that I was able to help run the placemat project for Meals on Wheels recipients this year. It gave me and my children a chance to sit down around the table in color at a time when we're so busy getting ready for our first day of school tomorrow. I was able to communicate directly with some members of church that I've never even spoken with before. The same project last year brought us together with Sue Campbell. My kids were charmed by her age and fascinated that she was 99 years old. They even exchanged letters in the mail after they met her. San Carlos Community Garden has become our favorite project to be involved with. I thank God for this opportunity. We immediately see the results of our hard work and we have been so blessed to spend time with many of our church members while helping the in garden to benefit the entire community. Carol always finds a way to get my kids involved and to make them feel needed and important. I lost my mom and my stepdad a few years ago, and when I'm in the garden, I can't help but think they are near me when a butterfly or a hummingbird buzzes by. When I was preparing what I was going to say this morning, I was talking with God the whole time. It was late, we've been very busy, I'm a procrastinator, and I was tired. I have a huge fear of speaking in front of crowds. I once even asked him if the rain would possibly be so heavy that it would cancel church this morning so that I wouldn't have to speak. <laughs> but as I was thinking back on my experiences this week and in the years past, and as I started to type my words, I got emotional because I'm just so thankful for how God is working in my life at this moment. He is working by giving me the ability the availability, and the desire to help and serve my neighbors. He's brought me to a church that makes me feel loved and needed, and I'm honored to have helped our church this year in labor with our neighbor. Thank you. Josh, would you come forward and share about your project? Good morning. Many times in the Bible, it tells us that we must do good and serve other people. Many times in the Bible, it says that we must love our neighbors. Many times in the Bible, it teaches us to give up our time and our possessions in service to our neighbors. In fact, the word give in the Bible is mentioned 2,172 times. As a church, we are responsible to take these words and turn them into a reality. We are to lead others, to serve others, to love others, to give our time up for others. And so the San Carlos United Methodist Church Community Outreach led a three-day event where volunteers went out into the community and beyond to help other people. This program was called Labor with Our Neighbors. Last Friday, myself, my parents, and numerous other church members arrived at Gage Elementary School to help teachers prepare for kids coming back to school. At nine o'clock, a door opened into the school and our large stampede of visitors flooded through the school office awaiting instructions from our project leader, Lois DeCock. Each volunteer was assigned a classroom. Me and my mom went to classroom B8. Walking across the campus, we observed the beautiful green areas, the decorations on the doors, inviting children into the place of learning. And there were murals painted on to the sides of the walls, creating a welcoming environment. One mural proclaimed, don't tell me the sky's the limit when there are footsteps on the moon. We arrived at B8, the farthest classroom from the center of the school in a bungalow. It was a third grade classroom. We climbed up to the top of a ramp, went inside, met the teacher, sat down getting right to business, working 
putting stickers into, onto the workbooks. The teacher bustled around the classroom, hanging up posters, answering emails, arranging tables and chairs in perfect order. No sooner than I sat down and started working, Lois came through the door and asked if one of us could go to a classroom that needed another volunteer. I decided I would go and went across the campus to this classroom. As I walked, I noticed on the other side of the fence from the school, children shrieked and squealed in delight, playing on the field next to the school, jumping around the play structure, riding in circles with joy on their bikes with training wheels. The juxtaposition of the hard work of a teacher compared to the carefree play of the children during the final days of a school, or during the final days of summer, displayed to me the sacrifices that the teachers made for the academic success of their students. I came into the vibrantly colored classroom and found Ruth O'Neill working on attaching stickers to 25 bright green notebooks. The shades were drawn and light poured throughout the room. The harmony of the chirping birds came through the window. I found out this was a fourth grade Spanish immersion class. The teacher there had been a teacher for 27 years. As me and Ruth proceeded to go around the class doing odd jobs, cutting out mini posters, assembling binders, preparing journals, I realized how much work there was to be a, as a school teacher, especially an elementary school teacher. The teacher has work to do long before school even starts. If we hadn't helped out these teachers, either of these tasks wouldn't have gotten done or the teachers would have had to spend two hours doing these tasks instead of spending time with their family or their friends. Now I knew that being a teacher is no joke. The average teacher works almost 11 hours a day, less than half of which is spent uh, teaching children. I knew there, were, there was hard work preparing assignments, grading papers, dealing with students and their parents, but it is hard to imagine the dedication these people have toward the children they educate. That's when I looked up at the teacher and saw the face of God smiling back at me. The boundless care, limitless love, and unconditional kindness that possesses these people. The fact that they come back to school every August for decades. The work that they do to shape the social, emotional, and educational growth of the children truly amazed me. We are blessed that they give up their time to make this world a better place. And as this church, the least we can do is give up our time to make their endless workload just a bit less endless. So I think that over 200 volunteers that showed up this week serve others with their generous gifts of kindness. And may we as a congregation come together once again next summer and hold out our hands in service to our neighbors in need. Thank you. Let us pause in silent prayer, giving thanks to God for all that we have seen and heard. Let us pause in a time of silence at this, at this time. <laughs> 